G'day everybody, it's Will here and welcome to Flow Mountain Bike. Now here's a question for all you cool cats and kittens out there. If you had a budget of $2,000, would you buy a hardtail or a full suspension bike? Now if you asked that question to me in the past, 10 times out of 10, I would have said get a hardtail. Firstly, because if you're looking at around two grand, you're gonna get a really good hardtail with decent quality components that are gonna stand up to actual off-road riding. Secondly, there just isn't really that much available in a full suspension bike at that price point. Now fast forward to 2020 and I reckon that advice still stands, but that was until this bike turned up. This is the 2020 Polygon Siskiyou D6. It's a full suspension trail bike and it has an air adjustable fork, it's got an air shock, it's got a 1x10 drivetrain, Shimano hydraulic disc brakes and a dropper post. And the recommended retail price on this bike is just 1,899 Australian dollars, which is absolutely bonkers. The question is though, is it any good? Now in this video review, we're gonna talk about what kind of bike the Siskiyou D6 is. I'm gonna be going into some detail about the parts on this bike, what worked well, what didn't work so well, and ultimately how it rides on the trail. Now before we go any further, two things. There is a full review of this bike on the website right now. We have a link in the video description below for you to click on, and that will take you to the full review of the Polygon Siskiyou D6. Secondly, if this is your first time joining us on our YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe right now. We've got a lot more video reviews coming your way in the near future. So if you're not familiar with the name, Polygon is an Indonesian brand that's been around for some time, and it's a company that places a big emphasis on providing a lot of bang for your buck. And nowhere is this more apparent than on this bike here. Now the Siskiyou D is Polygon's 120 millimeter travel trail bike. It's not an XC race bike. It's not a big travel all mountain bike. It's just in between as a general purpose all day trail bike. It's probably what a lot of us refer to as a mountain bike. The Siskiyou D is built around an alloy frame and a single pivot suspension design. And while the shape looks kind of similar to the previous version, it has been updated for 2020. Polygon has moved the rear shock location up the down tube, and that's done two things. The first is it's providing clearance for a water bottle inside the mainframe. Double thumbs up, that's fantastic. And it also, according to Polygon, makes the rear suspension a little bit more progressive too. Now, of course, the geometry has been updated on this bike. The head angle slackens out to 67.5 degrees. The reach has increased on all four frame sizes and the seat tube has steepened to 76 degrees. Those are all quite modern numbers for a trail bike with this amount of travel. The chainstays have gotten a little bit shorter, but there's still room for up to a 2.6 inch tire in the back of this bike. Polygons achieve this by moving to boost spacing on the back. The rear axle moves to a 148 by 12 millimeter bolt up axle. And elsewhere on this frame, it's all very contemporary. We have a tapered head tube with sealed headset bearings, internal cable routing through the down tube. And with the exception of the most rearward suspension pivot, which uses DU bushings, the rest of the suspension pivots are rolling on sealed cartridge bearings. Now there are three models in the range and the Siskiyou D6 sits in the middle. That's right, there is actually a model that's cheaper than this, that's the Siskiyou D5. And there's also a better spec model, that's the Siskiyou D7, but they're all built around the same alloy frame. As mentioned before, this Siskiyou D6 I've been testing here sells for $1,899 and it's sold online in Australia through Bicycles Online. And that means you order the bike on the website and it's delivered to your door in a cardboard box. You will have to fit the front wheel, you'll have to bolt on the handlebar and the dropper post and of course the pedals, but otherwise it's pretty much ready to ride out of the box. Now at 175 centimeters tall, I'm riding a medium in the Siskiyou D6 as per the recommendations on both the Polygon and Bicycles Online websites. On the note of frame sizing, the small frame size rolls on 27.5 inch wheels, whereas the medium, large and extra large are all rolling on 29 inch wheels. Right, so I wanna talk about some of the components on the Siskiyou D6. And the biggest highlight of this bike has to be that KS dropper post. Now it is a budget post, but it works absolutely fine. It goes up and down and I haven't had any untoward movement from it. 
Occasionally it can stick in the fully compressed position. Say if you compress the post and leave the bike in your shed overnight, you will need to tug up on the saddle to free the post the first time you go to ride it. It's not a problem with the post, it's totally normal. Otherwise it works fine. The under the bar dropper post lever is really nice as well. It is made of plastic, but it's actually quite solid and certainly it's more solid than the cheap wobbly alloy levers that I've used on some other budget dropper posts. Also kudos to Polygon for specking a nice wide handlebar on this bike, 760 millimeters wide. That gives you a good confidence inspiring position on the descents and it also helps you to lean the bike over through the corners. It does have a fairly straight profile though. I would like to see more back sweep and more up sweep to give a more comfortable riding position, especially on longer rides. Polygon has also specced Shimano hydraulic disc brakes on this bike and I had no problems at all with these throughout testing. They're smooth, they're solid, and I think they provide enough power for this type of bike. The levers are quite long and that's designed to facilitate two finger braking, which is good for beginners and those who are newer to mountain biking. It is possible to run them further inboard to facilitate one finger braking, which is exactly what I did. However, the right hand shifter doesn't play particularly well when it's set up on the outside of the brake lever. And that meant I had to run it on the inside of the brake lever. So although the brake levers were in the right position, it did mean that whenever I needed to shift gear, I would physically have to move my hand over on the grip to reach the paddles because they're quite far away. The shifting itself is otherwise absolutely fine from this one by 10 drivetrain. We have a Sunrace cassette on the back with an 11 to 42 tooth ratio. Of course, that ratio is smaller than a big 12 speed cassette and that just means you're gonna to have to get out of the saddle sooner on the steeper climbs. I do think Polygon could have specced a smaller 30 tooth chainring rather than a 32 because this is a 29er trail bike and it is quite heavy. Confirmed weight for our test bike without pedals is 14.55 kilograms, which is really quite heavy. Onto the wheel set, and these use alloy double wall rims, which have proved plenty tough throughout testing. They are tubeless compatible, but you will need to add tubeless tape, tubeless valves, sealant, and you'll need to add tubeless tires as well. That's because the stock tires aren't tubeless compatible. So if you did wanna ditch the tubes, it's not a cheap or easy process. However, the stock tires are actually pretty good. These are the Entity Spiderbait tires, fantastic name. 2.25 inches wide, pretty good compound, and they roll reasonably easily, and they provide pretty predictable grip on hard packed trail surfaces. If you're riding more technical trails with looser, bigger rocks, I do think this bike could benefit from a more aggressive and slightly wider front tire. But overall, I was pretty impressed by the stock tires. Now onto the suspension on this bike, and it is air adjustable front and rear. And that means if you don't already have one, you will wanna get your hands on a shock pump, and that will allow you to adjust the pressures to suit your weight and riding style. On the back, we have an X-Fusion O2 shock, and this has adjustable rebound damping and a two position lockout. The rear suspension on this bike is actually pretty good. It pedals quite efficiently. I didn't really need to touch the lockout lever even when I was riding on the road. It's not the most supple design around, but it does take the edges off harder impacts and that progressive suspension design gives you good support even on bigger landings. I can't say the same thing for the fork though, which is not great. This is the Suntour XCR32 and it is a low end fork, but it does come with an air spring and you do have adjustable rebound damping and a lockout on there. The problem with this fork though, is it has a load of stiction and that basically means it's not the smoothest fork going up and down. In fact, it's so stiff that I actually had to wind the rebound damping all the way off because there's already so much resistance in this fork to return cleanly and you don't want to slow it down anymore. There's also a lot of flex in the chassis as well. It twists and bends and contorts on harder impacts. And the more it twists and bends, the stiffer it gets and the less likely it's gonna absorb whatever impact is in the way. That makes it a relatively unpredictable fork on the trail. Occasionally when you're riding through a big rough rock garden, it can plow through the travel really quickly and that shifts your weight forward onto the front wheel when you're kind of least expecting it. But overall, it is a pretty harsh and unforgiving fork. Any test ride that I went on that was kind of over an hour and a half long just absolutely pulverized my wrists. It was pretty uncomfortable to ride. It's a shame because the Siskiyou D6 has a load of capability, but the fork really lets the whole bike down. 
Now, I know what you're thinking. Will, you're a spoiled journalist who normally rides $10,000 superbikes. Of course, you're not going to find this fork to be up to your lofty standards. Um, and indeed, the last fork that I tested nearly cost as much as this whole bike, to put it in perspective. But it has to be said that there are good entry-level forks on the market. I'm also testing a giant Stance 29 at the moment, and that comes with a Suntour Radon 34. So it's the same brand, but it is a higher end model than this. That Radon 34 is actually a really good fork. It's way smoother and way more predictable than this XCR32. While I do know that would lift the price up and probably push it over the two grand barrier, I'd love to see what this bike would ride with a better fork on the front. The next question is, if you bought this bike, could you just upgrade the fork? And yes, you certainly could. The frame is certainly worthy of it. And on the note of upgrading, the Siskiyou D6 is rated for up to 130 millimeters of travel on the front. So you could beef it up a little bit with a fork upgrade. But you'd be looking at spending a few hundred bucks to upgrade the fork on this bike. And at that point, I would want to think long and hard about the Siskiyou D7, which is the next model up from this. Now that bike costs $400 more, but it does come with a RockShox Recon fork with through axle dropouts. It also comes with WTB tires and a Shimano 1x11 XT drivetrain. So overall, that Siskiyou D7 is gonna have a lot more capability built into it from the get-go. Now, it's worth noting that the kind of rider who's gonna be looking at this bike in the first place is probably gonna be newer to the sport. Chances are the only mountain bike they've owned is a 20-year-old rigid rust bucket, in which case, this Siskiyou D6 and that Suntour fork are gonna feel absolutely amazing in comparison. Certainly, if you're gonna be riding easier green trails, forest tracks, and smooth bike paths, this fork and the bike as a whole will be perfectly adequate. The question you're gonna to wanna to ask yourself at that point, though, is, is a full suspension bike the best tool for the job? For a similar price, Polygon does make a 27.5 plus hardtail, which comes with significantly better components and a much better fork. It's also lighter, and in the long run, it's gonna be cheaper to maintain too. And for a lot of riders, that could certainly be the better option of the two. So that brings me to the verdict of the 2020 Polygon Siskiyou D6. Well, testing this bike was a real pleasant surprise for me. Despite my preconceptions, this bike was a load of fun to ride and it's living proof that good geometry can make all the difference on the trail and it's proof that good geometry makes an even bigger difference on a budget mountain bike. The Siskiyou D6 has a great quality frame, the rear suspension is effective and it's got good confidence inspiring handling. The parts package is also fantastic for the money. In particular, that dropper post is absolutely superb and nothing broke throughout testing, which is quite frankly amazing. Unfortunately, it is let down by the fork, which really shows its limits just as the rest of the bike is starting to warm up. However, there's certainly a lot of potential here for those who want a longer term project and a bike that they can upgrade over time. And ultimately, if your heart is set on a full suspension bike and your maximum budget is $2,000, then there is really nothing I could possibly recommend over this Siskiyou D6. Now, as mentioned before, there is a load more information about our experience of testing this bike over at flowmountainbike.com. We've put a handy link into the video description below, so click on that and that will take you to the full review. Now, if you've got any questions for me about testing this bike, make sure you drop them into the comment section below. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel already, make sure you do that right now. I have a couple of secret test bikes in the shed here, which you're gonna find out soon enough. Make sure you subscribe and get notified of when those reviews come out. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys, and I will see you next time. Toodaloo.